Success ain't earned, it's bought. That's why at Paddy Power, we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app. Download the new app from the App Store or Play Store now. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Light the candle, tiger! Hi there, welcome along to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington and I am joined as ever by Steve Palmer and Paddy Powers in McLaughlin to look ahead to two great events, one in Saudi Arabia, one in America. Before we look at who the chaps fancy this week, we'll have a quick reflection on last week. And Ian, it was a week when the fancied runners came to the fore, wasn't it? An expensive week for Paddy Power? Yeah, it was a poor week for us. Um, Bryson DeChambeau obviously was the classiest golfer in, in the Dubai field. Punters lo- latched onto that and he showed that in spades, winning by seven. And Rose will always be popular wherever he goes, uh, being the world number one. Obviously, UK and Irish company as ourselves. So, yeah, he was he was uh, pretty bad too. And the doubles, obviously, people were linking up the doubles too. So, yeah, losing week for us in the end. Losing week for Paddy Power. Losing week for Steve Palmer, was it? Yeah, it was a shame. Jordan, Jordan Smith was threatening a place for a long time, but uh, fine around 73. Uh, and then in the other one, I had John Rahm for, uh, to win 20 bags, win only. But, um, yeah, he looked the likely winner. He, he closed the gap to just one shot. Through six holes and uh, Rose was uh, going backwards. Ram was playing the best of the, the, the final group. So I was quite confident at that point. But uh, uh, Rose birdied the seventh and that settled him right down. And then it, it, it was game over from there. Ram didn't make another birdie to the hut. Really disappointed with, with Ram on that back nine. Um, so, yeah, onwards and upwards. OK, but you were down at the in-laws, weren't you? So uh, were you kind of having to sneak, sneak out while they were watching Miss Marple or something and, and well, see what I had, uh, I had the Dubai stuff on, uh, on, on mute. I was allowed to have the pictures on just in the background there, but, but uh, still getting involved in everything. But, uh, yeah, I mean, DeChambeau is absolute masterclass on Sunday, wasn't it? I mean, he's, he's just such a steely focus. I think, um, you know, he, he could go to the very top of the world rankings the, the way things are going. And um, it, it, as, as long as he's not penalised on his... Um, on his slow play because uh, obviously the, the, the big wigs are trying to clamp down on that a little bit and uh, that's the, the one weakness he has. He, everything he does is fantastic, but it takes him a long time to do it. Oh, him and his caddy, blimey, they do witter on, don't they? For God's oh, sake, remarkable. hit yeah. the bloody thing, for God's sake. Air but pressure and stuff. He, he's very thorough, isn't he? But he he's working. Is. He's, he's he is working. good. Did you do anything to his master's price after that uh, imperious display, Ian? Yeah, we gave him a good trim from 20 to 1 into 16 to 1, so he's... he's not quite favourite yet, but another couple of good performances. He could be close to favourite. Um, would Augusta f- favour him in? I think so. I one concern looking at the the field at the start of the year was his chipping. Like his action is very, you know, his golf swing's very motion to motion. It's all the same swing. It's kind of the same swing, same length of his of his uh, wedges as well. So that was one concern. But it looks to be getting better. He's getting a bit more wrist action into his uh, into his chipping. Uh, Augusta should really suit him tee to green. Like I think he was twenty fifth on debut as an amateur three years ago. Um, yeah, he looks flawless tee to green at the moment. If he can keep that putting up, I think he, he's nigh on unbeatable if he puts well in a good week. Mm. Steve, what was your take out from each tournament? Well, for Dubai, I thought Lucas Herbert was very impressive. I mean, that was his uh, Dubai Desert Classic debut, finished seventh. And uh, the bare figures don't tell the full story. He had a two-shot penalty for some uh, indiscretions in a bunker uh, in round three, early in round three. Uh, the third hole, so that was a real setback, and he still managed to finish seventh. If you give him the two shots back, he he finishes tied for second. So I think, yeah, Lucas Herbert can win on a big hitter's track this year. I like the look of him. And then from from the Farmers, uh, Rory McIlroy can take great encouragement from that. That was his de- Tory Pines debut. Finished fifth, drove the ball superbly, scrambled really well, which was uh, a big positive. So uh, I think Rory's got some positives, and then obviously Tiger whisper it quietly, but. What, what a lovely start to the year from Tiger. Just got, got better each day and uh, got exactly what he wanted from that tournament. I think he's just going to peak for the majors. How come Rory's never played that? That's very peculiar, isn't it? No, no, he doesn't play many... many uh, traditionally, he hasn't played many of the West Coast uh, events. He likes to start in the, in the Middle East, um, but he's really focused on the, on the US Tour this year. He says he wants to be in amongst the FedEx Cup uh, leaders uh, a bit quicker. Um, so, yeah, he's, sort of, he's turning his back on the European Tour a bit. OK, and Ian, what are your takeouts? Uh, from the Farmers, it was definitely the return of Hideki Matsuyama. He played some excellent golf. I only saw a second shot from the bunker on, uh, was it Sunday, the 5 from about 250 yards to about 5 feet. It was one of the best shots I've seen all this so far this year. Um, yeah, great to see him back. He's obviously coming this week to one of his favourite courses in Phoenix. Um, and in Europe, I'll be mentioning him in a, in a, in a brief moment, is Roman Langask. Um, he had an open around 66 in Dubai. He kind of... Um, 
faulted over the next two days, 72, 74, but had a flawless 66 on the Sunday. And he's coming now to a course that should suit him this week. So I think he's won a big eye catcher from last week. OK, a couple of questions have come in. Uh, Steve, I'll ask you the first one. It's from Mark Matthews. He says, please can you ask Steve if there's a time of year he favours for golf betting? Is he streaky like some players? Well, Mark, yeah, I am, actually. Uh, October seems to be the year where things go very, very well. So, um, yeah, be patient. <laughs> if we haven't had a winner by right. 10. <laughs> yeah, October's just consistently good for some reason. And wh which month do you hate? Uh, well, January, January. I, I don't enjoy January. So I didn't have a winner in January last year. So I'm not overly concerned. I'm not panicking. No, don't panic, Captain Mannering! No, no one's panicking. Uh, We're all nice and no. calm. Yeah, good. Okay, the good times, I'm sure, are just around the corner. Okay, and Ian, um, Brian has asked us about Doug Gim's chances in Bogota this week. Blimey, they get about these golfers, don't they? They do. He's gone from California to Colombia. So, um, yeah, he's actually there in our betting a second five, uh, 2021. I'll give you a quick run through if you Go want on, this level of field. Yeah, John Oda, who's been making hay in the web.com so far this season, uh, leads our betting at 18 to 1. Doug Gim, obviously, next in the 20 to 1. Tyler McCumber, 20 to 1. Matt Every, 25 to 1. Nick Vogue, 30 to 1. Stephen Alker, 30 to 1. Sebastian Munoz, 30 to 1. And 33 to 1 bar. Did you say Tiger McCumber? Tyler McCumber. Oh, Tyler. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> Steve, if, if your son gets, if you get approval from uh, Nicola for, to call the, the, the uh, newborn Tiger, I thought there might be three of them on the planet, but it's only going to be two. Is Tiger still Tyler? favourite there? Oh, on the baby front? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Negotiations have reached a, uh, they're, they're ongoing, but um, there's talk of middle names. There's a lot going on there, but I uh, can't possibly comment. What's favourite at the moment? Uh, well, I suppose, yeah, Tiger would be favourite, but... Um, What's the other like, one? You like Romeo, or you had some sort of Latin Fabio, 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 Fabio. Yeah, Fabio, Fabio still in the running, but yeah, I think it's it's like the Brexit negotiations. These things don't really hot up until um, <laughs> till the deadline. The deadline's fast approaching. You know, so you could be heading for No Deal on Tiger. <laughs> yeah, no name like Prince. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, right then, let's turn our attention to the Saudi International next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 80 plus, begumbleaware.org. Be the right club today! Welcome back. OK, then, two tournaments this week. We've got the uh, Phoenix Open down there in Arizona, a very well-established tournament. And we've got a new one, the Saudi International, taking place at the King Abdullah Economic City in Saudi Arabia. Been a bit of controversy here because of the uh, Saudi regime and people are saying that despite the fact that the government, our government does arms deals with this country and we buy loads of oil off them, that some golfers shouldn't go and play golf. I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bypass the political argument about this and focus on who's going to win before we look at who the lads fancy. We'll get a show of betting from Paddy Power. Yeah, so seven places this week in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau heads are betting at 13 to two, alongside Justin Rose at 13 to two, Dustin Johnson next in at eight to one, Brooks Kepka 10 to one, Sergio Garcia 14 to one, Matt Wallace 20 to one, Patrick Reed 20 to one, and 22 to one bar. Blimey, the boycott went well. All the big names are there, aren't they? Steve, first of all, before we get your main fancy, what sort of track is this? Uh, it's only been open for nine months, so um, not a lot of people uh, have, have played there. Uh, very short by modern standards. Sh look, look, looks easy. Looks easy from uh, from the pitches. Um, there's only one par five on each nine. Twelve par fours, a few lakes, but yeah, I think tidy golf, fairways and greens, tidy golf, and a hot putter will, 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 will yield a low score. I think it's twenty under par might, might might win this. Ian, you might be slightly more bearish on in terms of the low score. You think it could blow a bit, don't you? Just look at the forecast, like and looking at the the course itself and the flyovers. It's obviously it's by the coast, and there's plenty of, as Steve said, plenty of lakes and kind of water on the on the sides. And looking through the forecast, there's Saturday, Sunday especially, there's going to be wind and a consistent wind. Turn Thursday, Friday. So yeah, I'm looking. I think it could be relatively easy, but yeah, I'll be probably a little bit lower. I'll probably be 14, 15 on the part myself. Okay, it feels like the sort of week where a really handsome golfer could go well, Steve. Who do you fancy? Who's your main selection? <laughs> well, you like to call him the flatterer, but uh, I like to call him Thunderbear. Uh, so yeah, that, that 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 handsome Danish dude, Thorborn Olsson, will be uh, carrying my money again. He's uh, yeah, he won't give a monkeys about all the issues surrounding this event. I mean, you talk about the winning score. Maybe this, the strange atmosphere will put a, put a, all the best players off. I don't know. It's going to be a very odd week um, atmosphere-wise. I mean, In the what contrast. Sense? Well, it'd just be very quiet. I think, wouldn't it? It'd be very quiet, very quiet, very sparsely populated uh, event. I mean, the contrast between the galleries at Phoenix and the galleries in uh, in Saudi Arabia. 
I mean, it, it, it's going to be stark, to say the least. Um, but nothing bothers Thorborn Olsson. I, I think he'll slip straight into his r usual routine. He's a single man. He hasn't got to worry about ringing the wife every five minutes to reassure that he's okay. Um, of course he'll be and he, he, <laughs> he loves, well, you know, it's like yeah, yeah. You, 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 if you're a family man with kids, I think you go into a, a, yeah, what many consider a very dangerous place. I think. Thorben Olsson be totally focused on the golf. He loves performing in the Middle East, spends a lot of time in Dubai. Fantastic record in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Dubai. Uh, finished seventh in the Desert Classic last week, four rounds in the 60s. Uh, one of the best putters in the field. I mean, my, my instinct is this is an easy track. You want to you have good putters on your side. Olsson's one of the best in the business. He's, a, he's, a, he's not a flatterer. He's okay. not a flatterer. He's a, he's a five-time European Tour champion at the age of 29. You could say he's a seven-time European Tour champion because he's won the World Cup and the uh, Golf Sixes. So if you include pairs events, he's a seven-time Euro Euro European Tour champion at the age of 29. So, uh, yeah, I thought Olison was the best bet. OK, and your best bet, Ian? Yeah, it's one of the big prices. It's Eddie Pepperell. Uh, he's obviously been very vocal about uh, going to Saudi Arabia this week. I'm taking a cautious play on him. He's slowly making his way back from injury that towards the end of 2018, a neck injury. Uh, looking at the course setup, as I mentioned, relatively short course. Looking for the forecast, plenty of wind blowing through it. I think this will play to the strengths of Pepperell. Both European tour runs have come at similar type of uh, characteristic of layout and weather conditions. Uh, wins of the British Masters last year at Walton Heath. God, imagine it'd be a bit warmer <laughs> in Saudi. God, that Sunday at Walton Heath was brutal. <laughs> I'll go back. I'll, I'll, I'll retrieve that there with the Qatar Masters two years ago. A little bit more warmer conditions. I'm not just basing it off a of cold and wet Walton heat. Uh, obviously, he was 38 last week in Dubai, which wasn't a bad pipe opener. Hit the ball quite well. Didn't have a great green, uh, week on the greens. I'd advise a small each way play at 66 to 1 this week. Okay, Steve, you've got four others. Whiz through them. Next best is Joust Lewerton. A uh, few players on the circuit have more hunger for competition than Lauten. Had a long time off last year, uh, five months on the sidelines with a wrist injury. Came back in late October and was really impressive. Uh, finished 11th first time out in the Andalusia Masters, 23rd in Turkey, 27th in the Ned Bank, 22nd in the DP World Tour Championship, and then started this year spectacularly. Third place in Abu Dhabi, closed with a 65, which was better than anyone on the Sunday. And then, uh, then he got ill. He got ill, and he, he, he had an upset stomach, missed the cut on the mark in Dubai. Um, so suddenly shunted out of 50 to 1 uh, because of that missed cut. But it's nothing to worry about. Uh, upset stomach, it's gone. Straight back in business this week. Uh, like Olison, prolific European Tour champion, six-time winner. His last victory was in this neck of the woods, the Oman Open last February. Uh, he's got a great golf golf record, and I think this looks a perfect layout for his, his, his tidy tee to green uh, golf. Okay. So um, yeah, and then three more at big prices. But do you want Ian McLaughlin to get stuck in first? Uh, no, we'll have your other three, Steve. Three more. These are all whoppers. Uh, Romain Langasque. Uh, exceptional talent, 23-year-old Frenchman, clearly going places, 39th in the Masters as an amateur, N now starting to make real serious strides as a professional. Won on the Challenge Tour last year by three shots in September. Uh, finished fourth in the Challenge Tour Grand Final in UAE. Uh, any UAE, UAE, any UAE form, well worth considering this week for obvious reasons. Um, then he finished fifth in the European Tour Q School to get his card and was runner-up in the South African Open. So ended last year like a train and has started this year well. 20th place in Dubai last week. Five under par, back 9.32. Bogey-free final round, 66. So he came home really strong last week. Um, and then at two at even bigger odds, Marcus Kinholt and Gaganjeet Bula. Uh, Kinholt, like, like Langas, a promising youngster who's got some good form in the desert already. Uh, it's fifth in the 2016 Egyptian Challenge, which was his first visit to this region. That was on the Challenge Tour. Saudi Arabia, just across the Red Sea from Egypt. Um, he was second in the 2017 Challenge Tour Grand Final in the UAE. And he was third in the Qatar Masters last year. That's, that's the most significant piece of form. So Kinnolt, another tidy player. Made a rusty start to the year, but should really enjoy this assignment. And Bula, uh, for a 30-year-old, he's got a bulging mantelpiece. Prolific champion on the Asian Tour. Uh, and and got, off the, got off the mark on the European Tour last year in the Fiji International. And uh, a bit more about this, this Saudi track. It's, uh, it, it uses an unusual grass, which not many courses have. It's uh, Dynasty Paspalum. And uh, Bula won the Fiji International on, on that type of grass. So I think he'll enjoy these greens. And, uh, yeah, he's played well the last couple of weeks in, in the first two golf events. So, um, yeah, yeah, Kinal and Bula are the, are the massive prize ones. You'd know all about a bulging mantelpiece, Steve, wouldn't you? What have you got on your mantelpiece? Uh, I've got a, a, um, a, a replica claret jug, um, a couple of um, awards, sports betting right of the year awards. When I, was, I, I stopped entering that competition when I didn't win it, I had a fit of peak and stopped entering. But uh, I've got all the awards up to the point I stopped entering. And then uh, anything I've got from your junior golfing exploits? Uh, no, no, never, 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 never actually member of a of a golf club. I could never afford it. I was a very, very poor child. 
Um, but then I've got most of my stuff is from uh, John Owen from Formby, all the sort of gifts he, he, oh, yeah. he, he provides. It's this lovely, generous reader that sends me gifts. Yeah. I've got a, lot, got a lot of them on the mantelpiece. He yeah. sent me a Radiohead mug the other day. Did he? Yeah. Well, you, you never so know nice. what you're going to get, but it's always it's always good in this. It's yeah. always exciting when you get a package yeah. from from him. It's oh yeah, I wish more readers. I mean, ev- everyone loves you. I get loads of abuse. So to get like a Radiohead mug from John from John Owen from Former, it's bloody brilliant. It really is, honestly. It's so uplifting. Okay, so those are Steve Fancies. Uh, Ian, your main one is Eddie Pep. Who are you going to supplement him with? Just one more, and it's uh, Roman Langask as well. Um, as Steve mentioned, looks to be getting more settled on the European tour. Uh, begin beginning to fill the potential that saw him win the British Amateur in 2015. 15. His four, first four starts in the European Tour made for encouraging reading. Uh, first four starts this season, I should say. 23rd, 2nd, 15th, 20th. That 20 place finish included the first and final round last week in Dubai of 66. I think another player should be suited by the Royal Greens Golf Club and a smallish play for me again at 80 to 1. OK, let's whiz through the fancy contenders and get a quick one sentence view on each of them. Steve on Bryson DeChambeau. Should be favourite, yeah. Very tempted by Deshambo. I think he's by far the best of the market leaders, uh, but just a still a tad short. Yeah. Okay, Justin Rose, Ian. Uh, taxing week last week in California. Long way to travel to get over to Saudi. Won't, I'm looking to oppose. And Dustin, Steve. I think Dustin and Brooks have just been taking it very easy since uh, the last time they've been in the Maldives. I think just um, so I think there's a fair amount of rust. I can't together. See him being... Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. buddies again, are they? Yeah, they're buddies again. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they've got over the hump. Um, so yeah, I don't see him being that motivated for this. Okay. Um, I don't think either would be that bothered if they missed the cut and can get an early flight back because they they're just getting their healthy appearance fees. It, yeah, you know, the appearance fee will dwarf anything that they can win in the actual tournament. So that their job is done. Really? God, that's oh, amazing. Yeah. Blimey. So would that be a reason why you're you're not tipping Brooks Kupka, Ian? Yeah, I was going to say I was going to mention the motivation, but also the course might shackle their 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 power to kind of over overpower the course. So yeah, looking to take them both on. Too. Steve on Sergio, Sergio, yeah, every chance, yeah, yeah, probably the second most interesting one behind Deshambo. Okay, and finally, uh, Ian, what do you think of Big Pat Reed? Um, again, I think the course might be a little bit too tight, a little bit too short for him. Um, played okay last week in Torrey Pines, much like Rose, along with the travel. Here for a cash grab as well. So, yeah, looking to take him on as well. OK, from quiet, sedate, sandy Saudi to noisy Phoenix for the Phoenix Open next. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather or the gym. Oh, baby. Welcome back. It's Bruce Millington, Steve Palmer and Paddy Powers Ian McLaughlin. We're going to look to the Phoenix Open now. Always a favourite tournament in the early part of the year. It takes place at Scottsdale in Arizona. And of course, its trademark is the Stadium 17th with all sorts of fun and games. Gone a little bit over the top for me, Steve, this one. It's kind of, I wouldn't say it's become a caricature of itself, but I don't know that... The sort of raw fun that helped establish it has become a little bit more corporate. Do you think, Steve, or do you still get a thrill from it? Well, I don't like to have a down on it because it's saving the world in a way, isn't it? I think uh, waste management do a lot of good work for the environment. So um, I think they, I'm not sure how it works, but I think they encourage people to uh, to be you know, more environmentally friendly. I think that's the sort of theme of the event. Uh, the, Are they still uh, sponsoring event. it? Yeah, yeah. Still the cool, waste not getting a name thing, check yeah. in the Racing Post this week. They won't be happy with us. No, but it's all good fun. It's the 16th hole that's um, the crazy one, isn't it? And then the, the 17th... Oh, sorry, the 16th. Um, I've gone mad. Yeah, 17th is that drivable four, isn't it? That's right. That's right. Andrew sorry. McGee famously uh, got an eagle there. No, they're both fantastic holes. It is, it is a thrilling finish. And, um, yeah, we, we've seen a lot of drama there, a lot of playoffs. Matsuyama and Fowler had, a, had a, an amazing playoff there not, not, not long ago. So, no, this is one of the um, one of the events of the year. But, yeah, you're right. I suppose uh, the drunkenness does get a little, little bit much. <laughs> 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 Mind you, I'm, t- I'm two days away from the end of dry January, so I should imagine that if I was there on, on Sunday, there would be I would be the <laughs> drunkest person. I tell you. There's a pint out there that's going to get it. Uh, what's the latest betting in? Yeah, so eight places this week in Phoenix. Uh, John Ram heads are betting at seven to one. Justin Thomas next in at ten to one. Hideki Matsuyama eleven to one. Xander Shoffley at eighteen to one. Gary Woodland twenty to one. Tony Finau twenty to one. Ricky Fowler twenty to one, and twenty two to one bar. Right, it would have taken Ian about ten minutes to get down the list to your tip, Steve. As Graham Taylor once said, it's got to go big. You are <laughs> going big here, Steve. Who's your main tip? That's it. Kevin Tway is my main tip. I think Kevin Tway's career is on the up. Uh, he won on the web.com tour when he, in 2013 and everyone expected a, 
a more instant US Tour victory, but it's, it's taken him a few years. He turned 30 and then boom, made his uh, US Tour breakthrough in October that won the Safeway Open and won the Safeway Open in really gutsy fashion. It was a three-man playoff. And uh, in the playoff, Tway went birdie, birdie, birdie to see off uh, Brant Snedeker and Ryan Moore. So, um, you know, obviously amazing levels of confidence come from that. I think he'll kick on from there, uh, finished last year well. And then he, he opened this year with um, a great performance in the Century Tournament of Champions. He was really struggling. Uh, he had to pull out the Pro-Am the previous, uh, uh, just before it started because he had a, a really bad virus. Uh, but he, he, he pinged the lids, uh, led it, led after round one and eventually finished 11th. Um, and he's back in full health now, working his way towards the top 50 of the world rankings. And he's tackling the Phoenix Open, yeah, which is a yeah, TPC Scottsdale is a course that really suits him. He's a powerful driver. He can, he's set himself up really well on, on all these holes. Um, but this is the first time he's been to the Phoenix Open uh, with any sort of game, really. He, he was 293rd in the world rankings on his first visit. He was 197th in the world rankings on his second visit. And, but now, obviously, he's a much more confident US Tour champion. I'm expecting big things. 100 to 1, Kevin Tway. How many have you got this week, Ian? I've got three. Three. Give us your main one. Yeah, it's Adam Hadwin. Uh, he's actually coming to his home course this week. He, he said in an interview last week he moved to, uh, two weeks ago, sorry, moved to Arizona a couple of years ago and practiced quite a bit at TBC Scotts. His affiliation for Desert Golf was well documented with a second place finish last time out in the Desert Classic. His overall game looks to suit these course setups and he said in interviews that he reads these type of greens better around the desert than anywhere else on the, on the US tour. His approach play was excellent in California, a key component needed to contend at TPC Scottsdale. His last three starts in Phoenix reads 17, 12, 43rd. Not a bad uh, portfolio. He'll be my main play this week of 40-1. to 1. OK, Steve, Tway's your main one is 100. You've got a couple of even bigger prices, haven't you? Who are you going for? This is it. Next best is Jason Cockrack. A uh, little bit older than Tway. Still a US Tour maiden, but uh, he's threatened on numerous occasions. Six top four finishes now on the US Tour for, for, for Cockrack. Uh, and that includes a couple of runner-up spots. Uh, he's won twice on the web.com tour, so I think he can get the job done. Uh, and last year, he was having a terrible season, but then third place in the Greenbrier in July sparked him into life, restored confidence, and he's now on a streak of 11 consecutive cuts made. Uh, he's opened 2019 with a pair of top 20s. So, uh, yeah, he's playing some really solid golf. And, uh, you know, like Tway, he's come to Phoenix in the past, you know, lacking self-belief, but, but not this week. He's playing well. The course is set up for bombers like him. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Jason Cut do some plenty of damage. OK, and who else do you like? And then we've got one more, three outsiders against the field. Peter Ulein. Uh, world number one amateur for a total of 49 weeks. Uh, magnificent young talent, full of potential, but for various reasons, it's not yet been realised. I mean, he's had a few few injuries. Um, he won on the European Tour, and then he won on the Web.com Tour last year. Um, sorry, 2017. And uh, last year, he, he, he really started to threaten a maiden US Tour victory. He finished fifth in the Wells Fargo, fifth in the Memorial and um, I don't think it'd be long before Ulai makes his US Tour breakthrough. He, 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 he's always been destined to be really, really good. Um, he's only played once in Phoenix, but he's got a bank of desert experience in, in, to draw upon from the European Tour. Played a lot on the European Tour. He was, uh, his last two visits uh, to the desert on the European Tour finished fifth in the Dubai Desert Classic and tenth in the DP World Tour Championship. So um, he's proven in the desert, and although he's made a slow start to this season... Um, he finished last year with a 63 in the RSM Classic for seventh place there. So I don't think it'd be long before he gets going again. OK. And Ian, as well as Adam Hadwin, who do you like this week? Yeah, just two more. Next best is uh, Ches Reevy. Uh, Reevy has been putting up really strong tee to green figures in recent weeks. He was second in strokes gained in pros for the week at the Sony Open. That was en route to a third place finish. He was 28 at the Desert Classic, which wasn't really a bad performance. Again, his tee to green figures were very good. Just didn't get going on the greens. You need to hold a lot of putts that week to contend. He was second here last year, um, lost in a playoff to Gary Woodland. I think he can go close again this week at around 50 to 1. And the outside, I'm taking another chance on Sung Jae Im, uh, around 100 to 1 mark this week didn't really take the Tory Pines last week um, but his 12th place finished the week before in the desert should see him go well here his overall tee to green tee to green game sorry is still in good shape he'll have a little bit more room off the tee this week so he can take advantage with his driver to complete my lineup this week OK and we'll get an assessment of the favourites now Ian what do you think of John Rahm's chances uh, obviously in very very good form uh, he used to go to the University of Phoenix this is a home game for him almost I think he's a worthy favourite around 7-1 Justin uh, not Justin yeah Justin Thomas uh, Steve 
Justin Thomas, probably the weakest of the three market leaders, hasn't got a great course record there. Famously got ha- hammered by the crowd after throwing his club at the 16th. Uh, was that last year? Uh, yeah, yeah, he had a bit of a tantrum. He had a bit of a tantrum in front of the uh, the 16th. And um, you know they they they, they, won't they, they, that, they, won't they? they don't they don't forget in a hurry. No, no, I don't, I'm not sure about Thomas this week, but uh, I like the other two. The knowledgeable 16th crowd, uh, Matsu Armour. I think you got the hots for him. Why didn't you tip him, uh, Ian? Yeah, I just I was looking kind of bigger prices this week. I'm not sure. Like he went off 66 to one with us last week. I know he's coming to his favourite course. I know he's back in flawless form. I could probably let him go off at around 11, 12 to one this week personally. Steve, do you fancy Xander Schauffele at all? No, not really. No, no, no. I, I prefer Jean de Chaffele on um, m- more difficult courses. I mean, I, I'm with Ian. Like, I thought the prices on the market leaves were all a bit too short because this is a straightforward track. You know, it brings a lot more of the field in. You know, it, it won't take much to win this week. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I do respect Rama and Matsuyama, but I think they're both too short. OK, let's get the solemn, clear recap of all the tips. Saudi international Steve Palmer. How solemn do you want, like sort of? No, just so people can hear it. No nonsense. <laughs> Thor Bjorn Olsen, Juiced Louiton, Romain Langask, Marcus Kinholt, and Gaganjit Bula. Ian McLaughlin, <laughs> Eddie Pepperell, Roman Langask. That wasn't very solemn. You're not coming to my funeral if you're going to be all <laughs> jokey like that. Uh, <laughs> Steve, sorry, I'm trying to get solemn again. Steve, Phoenix Open. Well, Saudi Arabia should be the solemn one, really, shouldn't it? And then Phoenix should be yeah, the upbeat one. So let's do some upbeat yeah. ones. OK. Kevin Twee! Kevin Twee! <laughs> Jason Cockrack! <laughs> Peter Uline! Uh, and Ian. My people in the next room, so I can't be too loud, but Adam Hadwin! Jez Reeve! Sung J.M. Excellent. Oh! What people? <laughs> I'm intrigued by this. It's like your mum having coffee morning or something. No, no, I'm, in, I'm in the office. Oh, right, there's you're in the people, office. There's people beside me through a window. They can see just saw me there <laughs> shouting out loud. So. Oh, it's all fun and games. Exactly. I, should, I thought that would be standard behaviour at Paddy Power. That's you're all true. wacky, That's aren't you? Yeah, wacky, exactly. We're happy, yeah. and free. we're happy and free. We're, we're in the Western world. <laughs> exactly. And uh, if you only had one bet this week, Steve, what would it be? One bet, Thunderbear Ollison. In a double with Kevin Tway. I bet you've done that, haven't you? I have done that, and that will yield a half a million pounds, and we'll, have, we'll do one more podcast then before um, <laughs> bringing my replacement. Oh, God. Oh. Well, good luck with that, sort of. Ian, one bet from you this week? Just Adam Hadwin this week in Phoenix. Adam Hadwin. OK, thank you very much, chaps. That's marvellous. Uh, let's see what we've got coming up. Mark Langdon is going to be hosting the Football Postcast tomorrow. I'm back with the weekend racing on Friday. And then we've got racing again on Monday, anti-post racing on Tuesday. And I say we're back next Wednesday. Ian and I are back. Steve, where are you buggering off to? Well, I'm going to the seashells, as my daughter likes to call it. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get away from uh, things in the, in the Indian Ocean. Oh, lovely. I think, I think it's in the Indian Ocean, isn't it? Yeah, yeah pretty sure it is, yeah. yeah. How long are you going yeah. for? Going for 10 days. Did you so choose the hotel back. or did uh, Nicola? No, 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 I, I chose everything, because you, you know, w- with a pregnant wife, you've got to be careful of this Zika virus, haven't you? But Seychelles is one of the few places on the earth that's hot and hasn't got the Zika mosquito, so um, oh, that's, why I, that's why I selected it. So, yeah, hopefully come back, uh, you know, freshen up and come back really strong. OK, Ian, t- give us a tantalising glimpse of what we've got next week. So there's something on the running order that says the Vic Open. Yeah, it's a Victorian Open. It's the kind of initiative on the Australian slash European tour. I think there's a women's event on the, on the, on the course beside it as well, so they both play two tur- 72 hole tournaments in the round themselves so that should be fascinating and then we go to Pebble Beach for the AT&T Pro-Am which should Excellent. be a decent field Lovely stuff join us for that and good luck with your golf bets this week Success ain't earned it's bought that's why at Paddy Power we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app download the new app from the App Store or Play Store now 18plusbegumbleaware.org Give them the whole